In this video we'll be taking a look at the basic terminal usage topic on Veracode's Security Labs Community Edition. So these are free labs that are available if you go and sign up. I'm just going through these at the moment because the Hacker Games are starting in uh, a week or two and our university team has enrolled so I just thought I'd check out the free edition. Here we are, Queen's University Belfast. I just thought I'd check out the free edition before um, before it begins and see what the format is and what to expect really. So uh, yeah let's start with the first topic it's basic terminal usage and it says shell commands to navigate around directories, modify files, common encoding patterns, cryptographic techniques and command line tools. So we've got a progress bar here to show how far we've got which at the moment isn't we haven't started and we have six different categories intro to bash 1, 2 and 3 Encrypting, encoding, and hashing, nano for text editing, and intro to bash scripting. So let's begin with the first topic with 10 points intro to bash 1, and this will be shell commands to navigate around the directories and modify fi files. Let's hit start. Okay, so we've got an interactive lab here, a terminal which we've got access to. I guess we can run commands on, although maybe we can only run the commands we're supposed to. No, okay, we can run uh, different commands. We have a code editor here as well. I guess there's no code. Oh, okay, it's just loading up. Um, or maybe there is no code here. It doesn't look like it. Uh, let's have a look at the description anyway. It says type uh, print working directory PWD to print your current working directory that displays the full path that your shell is currently pointed to it should show home white hat meaning that you're in the home directory of your user which is named white hat okay let's so let's go and do that um, we type that and then it it notices that we've done that successfully and we can move on to the next section I guess we have some options here as well we can save our work in case we want to continue later that's cool I guess then during the CTF uh, I know that um, it's score based but if there's a tie then teams will be determined the score will be determined by who solves the labs quickest but obviously people might start a lab and not necessarily realize how long it's going to be and, and how long it's going to take so you have the option to save and continue which is pretty good and option to restart as well. Alright, so let's move on to the next section. And this is about listing files and directories. So it says we can run ls to see the available files and folders in the current working directory. Let's do that. Nothing will appear, okay, but we have the option to view hidden files and folders. So it suggests using dash a and that will show any hidden files which uh, be begin with a, a dot. So let's do ls dash a and Finally, we can run against the secret directory and that's how to list the files inside a directory. So we'll do ls dot, I wonder do I have autocomplete here, yeah, cool. And now we can see that we've got file 1 and file 2, we've completed this part. We could also presumably run other commands if you want to see more information about the permissions, about the owners, um, the size, the dates and things like that. Uh, can we clear this as well? Nice, we'll clear it between each section then. So let's move on to the next section. So the next section is on changing directories. And it says here we can cd into the secret directory. So we'll do that cd.s and then we can just hit auto, uh, hit tab to auto complete that. I hit it too many times. And then we can cd into that and then we can list the directories and see what files we have. And we can actually see there if we wanted to print out what we have in the files. We've got nothing in file 2 and file 1 just has hello. Uh, cool, let's go on to the next section. Okay, that's exactly what the next section was. Cat the contents of file 1, so let's do that again. Cool, nice and easy. And create and delete files. Okay, so we can create a new file with touch. We'll do touch file 3. So we create a new empty file. And then if we want to remove it, we can do rm, remove, remove file 2. Okay, that was the empty file that we've removed. And then we want to list the directory and see that we have what, what we expect. In this section, we are looking at displaying text and writing to files. So we can do echo hi. There we go, printing out hi on the command line. 
we can redirect that to a file. So we can do echo hi to file three. And finally, then we can print that back out. And there we go, we've completed intro to bash one. Let's go back to the main section and we'll go back into this and we'll do intro to bash two. So the second section is on navigating files and folders more efficiently and searching for file contents. Let's hit start. So section two here says that we can list all files and folders in the current directory with the dash a flag of the ls command and it tells us to look at the dot here which represents the current directory and then the dot dot which represents the parent directory one level up and says that if we cd into folder one and then cd dot dot that'll take us back to the parent directory and then we can do pwd to print the working directory and verify that we're in home white hat so we'll move on to the next section. This is about changing paths. So this is just kind of the same thing. It's just letting us know that we can actually CD into, let's CD into folder one, and then CD dot dot slash folder two. And we can just chain those, uh, changing directories. We can, we can chain that together to go up and down multiple directories in one go. Let's go next again. And this is giving us different flags we can use with ls. So we can do ls-a to list all the files, but we can also do ls-l to get more information. And we'll see that the we we have the permissions here. We have the the owner and the group. We have the uh, size, the the date and time, and the file name. And we can combine those as well to do ls-l-a or ls-a-l or ls-al or ls-la so it doesn't matter the combination of those as long as they're as long as you're them and we'll go into the next section this is about searching for file contents and suggesting we can use the grep command to do grep and it's saying grep content in all and we see that file three, this file actually has some content in it. If we try that again and say grep hello, we'll see that we don't get anything back. But we could just cat all the files and see what's in them. We'll see that actually there's only one file that has anything in it, and that's file three. Let's go on to the next section. And this is about tab completion and command history. So if we use the up and down keys we can go back and search for search through for different commands it's asking us here to do cd dot dot and then it wants us to cd into fo we can basically type the first like couple of characters and then hit tabs until we get the possibilities here and then we'll do folder it's telling us to do folder one or folder two we'll cd into folder one yeah okay there we go and we'll go next, and there we go, we've completed intro to bash 2. And let's go back into our bash terminal usage, get this finished up. Go on to intro to bash 3, worth 10 points. Again, these are all worth 10 points. And this is focusing on previewing the contents of files, creating new folders, and moving files around. So we'll go start here. And the intro says to preview a file, it's telling us here we can cat the file out, so we can type cat, let's do it, cat archives file one, and this will display the full contents of the file, and it's also telling us we can use tab completion as we did. We can also say if the file is really long, we only want to get a certain number, so we could say in this case head-n3 and get the, oh, head-n3 of the file was um, archives file one and we'll get the top three lines we could do the same with tail and get the bottom three lines so you might have a file of URLs of a I don't know 10 million URLs and it would take a long time to try and open it up in a text editor and cutting it out would make it very hard to kind of take up a lot of your terminal screen and again maybe slow down your computer so an option is always just to use head or tail just to get the first few lines off of a file and if we just do 
head without the without the n parameter we can still do that and how much did it print by default it looks uh, printed all but the last line there maybe 10 10 lines is it by default or something not too sure okay so let's go on to the next section and this is just giving us a little bit more information about grep saying we can use grep one and we're doing grep one archives file file one to search for the text one and this is going to show us the lines that have one in there it should turn up four lines compare them to the full files contents does it look like anything's missing so what it's telling us to do there is let's cut that out archives file one and it's not found this one so it's just letting us know that we can use a dash i flag let's use our command history and let's do grep dash i one and now it'll look for the case since it's case insensitive search now okay let's go on to the next section so this section is on making new folders and combining commands and it tells us that we can create a new folder called post using the make directory command so we'll do that we'll create the new directory we can then hit do ls to list the directory we'll see that we have archives and we have posts if there are many files and folders it might not be easy to see if the new folder is there we can combine ls and grep to filter our results to do this we use the pipe pipe character to pipe the results from ls to grep so let's do ls grep posts and there we've listed the directories and we've grepped out the one that we're actually looking for if there was a lot of directories or files that might be useful what else is it just me could do here this should just return the new post folder verifying that yep so we can try running that again for not real or not eel and we'll see that it doesn't bring anything back because that's not a directory Going to the next section, it's about copying and moving files. We can use the cp command to cop create a copy of a file and the move command to move one from one place to another. It's asking us to copy archives file one. We're going to put it in posts file one. We can actually just put it in posts like that and it'll rename it, it'll give it that name just fine. And then we can do ls posts and we'll see that we've got file one in there. It's also asking us to use cat as well. So let's cat posts file one. We'll see that it's in there and it also wants us to move archives file one to posts file two so we'll do that we'll list out posts although it doesn't look like it's really making us do that now but let's do it anyway posts file two and there we go um there we go we've completed the intro to bash three intro to bash three let's go and check out the encrypting, encoding, and hashing section. This section is about encoding and it tells us a little bit about, about what encoding is. We can transform it. It's not the same as encryption, obviously. It's not undecipherable. We just need to know the decoding method. And it gives us some examples of URL encoding. We can, we've got a link here to Wikipedia. Um, Base64 encoding. So URL encoding is used to transfer data as a single string. And Base64 encoding is going to convert into uppercase, lowercase, digits, basically alphanumeric with uh, just plus and forward slash and equals. And what's it asking us to do here? It's asking us to base64 a file. So we can base64 this greeting.txt. We get the result. We could copy this as well. Let's take a copy of that and say echo. Oh, we can't paste in with shortcut. Uh, so we'll echo that and then paste that into base64-d and that'll base64 decode it and it's, it's asking us to decode this so we'll copy that and then we'll do well we need to do the same thing I'll just take advantage of the command history by pressing up and then go and paste this in and we get hello white hat so let's move on to the next section this is about open SSL. Oh, it's taking us straight on to the next section, <laughs> uh, even though I haven't completed this one yet. Um, okay, so it says the tool open SSL can help with the task of encrypting or decrypting files. We've already installed open SSL using sudo apt get install. Uh, run open SSL help to get some 
a list of commands. So we can do open SSL help, and here we get a list of commands and the different cipher schemes. So we have enc for our different uh, algorithms here. We've got des, we've got AES as well, and the various modes. And here's a list of our different commands. Cool, let's go on to the next section. One commonly used secure encryption algorithm is PBKDF2, which stands for Password Based Key, key Deri Derivation Function 2. Uh, we'll use this as a cipher command for OpenSSL, and we'll use strong AES 256 bit encryption with the option, okay, cipher blockchain in mode. And it, yeah, I'm not going to go too much into the details of the crypto. Using the file greet in text as an input, we're going to create a key, an encrypted file named secret.txt using OpenSSL by running the following commands. So we can do OpenSSL, enc, and then we're putting in the algorithm, which is pbkdf2, and then the encryption mode, AES, AES 256-bit cipher block chain in mode and then our input is greeting.txt our output is secret.txt and then it's asking us for a password take a look at the contents is it, so it's just saying any password okay I'll just put white hat then and again and then we just want to print out secret.txt and we'll see there it's we've got the salt salted and then so just some random looking we can do diff and pass in greeting and secret and now we can compare the two one so it was initially hello world it's now been converted into this okay let's go to the next section and this is talking about public and private keys um, there are two types of encryption key, private key encryption which relies on keeping a secret key and public key encryption which relies on secure algorithms. PBKDF2 is an example of private key encryption also called symmetric encryption. The same key is used to encrypt or decrypt the data and the key must be kept private to ensure secrecy. So a public uh, key encryption would be something like RSA where a public key can be used to sign and verify and the private key is used to decrypt or oh, well the private keys used to sign the public key can be used to verify and the private key can be used to decrypt messages and you use somebody else's public key to encrypt messages for them uh, maybe it'll go into this as well let's let's um, see what it's asking us to do it wants us to decrypt the file so what I'm gonna do is just go and use this auto complete because most of the stuff's the same here the difference is we want to put dash D to say we want to decrypt it and instead of sending in the greeting.txt, we're going to send in secret.txt. And instead of a dash out file, we just pass that, we just pipe it to, or not pipe it, just output it to decrypted.txt. It's asking for the password, the password is white hat. Oh, it doesn't ask for it twice, okay. And then we have our decrypted text, which is back to hello world. What's this little? S oh, we've got. Oh, there's a show hint section as well. Okay, we don't need a hint for that. That's fine. Encrypting, encoding, and hashing. Okay, so this is going on to RSA now. So this is public key encryption, and as or an asymm asymmetric encryption it uses a pair of keys. A known public key, which anybody can have access to, is used for encryption, while only whoever holds the secret private key can actually decrypt messages. And What's it asking us to do? It wants us to generate first a private key. So we'll do private dot pem. So we'll do open SSL gen RSA dash out private dot pem, and we want it to be 1,024 bits. And see, it's generated the private key there using two primes. Um, and now it wants us to generate a public key. Open SSL, okay, so open SSL RSA, and we give in the private key. We're going to produce a public.pem, and the out form format is pem, and pub out. Oh no, 
this one character that shouldn't be there. There we go. And now we've generated our keys. Let's see what we've got. We've got private pem. We've got public pem. We can do file and have a look at the files we've got here. Oh, we can't check the file type, can we? The file command is not found. Interesting. Okay. Um, now you or anyone can encrypt a file using this using the public key. So we can do open SSL RSA util dash encrypt. We take in the public key and then put in dash in. We take in greeting and then we're going to have that out as RSA dash encrypt dot txt. We could print that out, RSA encrypt, you can see that it's encrypted. And then finally we can decrypt that because we, as long as we hold that private key, so we can do open SSL RSA util. Oh, is it not? It's not letting me type now. Let me try and clear. Oh, God. Um, I can't get out of this. Can I restart just this? Oh, that's just, that's the whole lab. Wow. Okay, let me go back. Go next again. I guess I'll try and save it. Save the checkpoint. Restore your last checkpoint. Okay, okay, looking good, looking good. So long as it doesn't fill the terminal with... Okay, good. That's cool. Hopefully it's got still got stuff there. It does, it's got RSA encrypt. So let's do OpenSSL RSA util dash decrypt dash in key is private.pem and then we're going to take in the RSA encrypted text. We're going to produce RSA dash decrypted. I'll just call it that just in case they that might be required for the challenge to be completed. And then presumably we can print this out and we'll see hello world. Great, we'll go on to the final section here on hashing. Hashing is a related but separate concept. It's a process of tra transforming data into a fixed length output using a specialized algorithm. Generally different inputs should produce completely different hash outputs and hashing is a one-way process, meaning that you can't take a resulting hash and transform it back into its original data. So we can do as it suggests here and do echo hello. Oh, if we can type, we'll do echo hello. And then pipe that to MD5 sum. And that'll produce the MD5 value. And this just lets us know that uh, the slightest change, if we do hello one, it's gonna give us completely different values. Hello two. There's no correlation there and if we hit next then we've completed this section and let's go and take a look at nano for text editing nano isn't something I really use at all so um, maybe I'll learn something new here as well download and run uh, we can install it, it's asking us to install, I'm assuming it's already installed um, but we can do sudo apt get install if we need to Let's do nano. Oh, we do actually have to. Sudo up to get install nano. All right, it's going to download and install that, and then we can do nano. And there we go. We can do control and X to exit. Let's go on to the next section. Just letting us know that the commands at the bottom of the screen uh, means that we have to use a control key to use them with whatever letter combination. Common is control, control and O to write out to a file. Okay, type control and O and then you'll get the confirmation of the file name that you wish to save. Control and X uh, will exit as well. Okay, so what's it asking us to do? It's asking us to was it asking us to create a file? Nano Okay, it wants us to do nano. Did it ask us to type anything in? No. Control and O, okay, file name to write, and then it wants us to do hi.txt and then we can do control and X to exit. And then we can cat out hi.txt and oh, it should show hello world. What did it ask us? Oh, it asked us to write hello world. Okay. So we'll type in here hello world. 
we'll write it out, we'll save it as hi.txt, overwrite that file, yes, and then exit, and then we'll cat out hi.txt. And next it's letting us know that we can use control and K to cut the first line of text, control and U to uncut. Okay, so we'll open up, it's just asking us to open up the same nano hi.txt, control and K to cut that, and then we can do control and O, oh, not control and O, sorry, that's, that's to write, control and U, oh, we need to cancel that, control and C, then control and U, 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 control and O, write it to hi.txt, exit, and there we go. And it's asking us to do control and K to delete all of that, but we want to exit and not and not save. Oh, instead of doing. Okay, let's well let's let's open it up and see what it does. We'll do control K, control K, control K, control K, control K, and then we can do control and X, and it says, do you wish to save? And we can do control and C to cancel. And if we do it again, let's do exit and say, do you wish to save? And then we can do no, and make sure that our text still remains, it does. Find and replace. With the five line high text file open, let's do, oops, what did I just click? <laughs> uh, we can do nano high.txt and control and backslash. That's going to search, okay, and we're going to search for hello. And then hit replace with, where is replace with? Oh, replace with, we want to say hi, and then hit enter, okay. Do we want to replace this instance, or do we want to replace all instances? And it wants us to replace all, so we'll do all, it's replaced all, we'll write it out, and then we'll save the file. Go next again. And this is for inserting text from another file. Okay, so we'll open up nano hi.txt again. We can do control and R to start reading input from a different file. And then what file do we want to, so it's saying to use shakes. So we'll do shakes. And there you can see that it's brought in some text. Oh, in between the second, from the, between the second and third line, oops. <laughs> Okay, we'll do that now. Control and R, shakes. That didn't work out well. Let me. We can say, hi world. Then we could do control and K, then we can do control U, control U, control U, control U, control U. And then we can go back to, let's create some space here, I guess, and then control and R, and then shakes. And that's imported that in. And now it's just asking us to save it, yeah. Write it out, save it, and exit. And there we go. Navigating and searching for text. So let's open up nano hi.txt and it's saying we can use control and N. Um, control and N opened up a new thing for me. Let's do control B. Okay, control B to search. And then we can search, oh, it's saying search for Yo Rick. And let's jump straight to that spot. Okay. Ordinarily, you do Control and W. Okay, we can move to the beginning and ends of lines. So we can do Control P to go to the end of a line. Control E isn't doing anything for me. Control A. Okay, Control A or Control E. That's just the same as in in Bash in general. If we go out of this, exit, and I type a lot of text here. If I do Control A, oops, not Shift A. If I do Control A, Control E. It's going to move backwards and forwards here between the beginning and the end. And finally, copying and pasting. 
So let's open Nano Hi TXT again. It's saying to go for the Yo Rick at the beginning of the cursor and do control and the hat symbol. It's March set. With a mark set on your rick, hit control and space, okay, so that it hovers on the next word. Hit I. Oh, hit the left arrow space, it said. Left arrow key once. Just to the left of the cursor, and then it's saying do control and K. Cut the name, and then type nano in its place. Okay. Save changes. Control O. Yep. Control X. We exit. And we're done with the nano stuff. So let's move on to the final section, which is intro to bash scripting. So we'll start the section. It says automate tasks by writing and running bash basic scripts in bash. Okay. Uh, so we should be comfortable using the text editor here. We can use nano. We should review the basics if we need to. We can. It's also saying we can use vim as well. So run. Okay. So run the command clear and then the command echo hello world. So we'll do clear. We'll do echo hello world. Now let's turn this pair of simple commands into a separate shell script so they can run from file. Okay, so we're going to do vim script.sh. It's going to take us into vim. We can do i to begin the insert mode so that we can type some text in and add the two commands. So it's asking us to add clear and then also add echo hello world. And then we can escape to get out of the right, the insert mode. We can do colon to get so we can enter commands here and we can tab through things but I'm gonna do oops uh, I'm gonna do W for right and then Q for quit we could do those separately but let's do right and quit and then we can run that with oh, it's telling me to go next already we can run that with shell uh, or we could do chmod make it executable chmod plus X pass in the script and then we can from then on do dot slash script oops um, yeah uh, so often you'll see bin bash at the top the, with the shebang which just says it's just telling this script that it needs to run itself through bin bash so that could be bin sh as well or bin python depending what kind of script that you're running so to complete the scripts the step we've already done that so we'll go to the next section we can use the shell command Another way is to make the script direct. Oh, we've already done that. Okay, so it's already letting us skip straight onto the next section because we've already done chmod. And we can see if we do uh, ls dash, we can uh, ls dash l will be fine. We can see here that we, that in terms of that, that we've made this executable as well. So let's move on to the next section. And this is about modifying the path. Okay, so in the previous step we did dot slash to call it, yeah. We couldn't just call script.s script sh even though it's in the current directory because the current directory isn't on the path. So let's echo path. This is our path. So this is the order. Whenever we try to run something, uh, this is the order that we'll go through. These are the directories that we'll go through in order to try and find that command, that program. Or that file. So we can do, yep, print work directory, verify that we're in home white hat, and then we can add this to our path. So let's export path is equal to, so path is equal to, and then we're passing in the variable of the current path, and then we're appending to that home slash white hat. And now if we echo the path, we'll see that home white hat has been added onto this. So it'll go through each of these sections and eventually if it can't find the script somewhere else, it'll then finally look in home white hat. And now we can try and run script.sh and see that it runs hello world. 
the next section uh, is about introducing variables okay so it's saying let's create a variable here and is it asking us to use the same the script as a new first line in the script okay so let's do vim script.sh and we can do i to go and insert just create a bit of space and then we'll set my var equals to equals universe and does it ask us for anything else At the last line of the script, okay, it asks us to, instead of echoing hello world, it wants us to echo hello my var. Okay, so we'll put this into quotes. We'll do dollar my var. Make sure we close off these quotes. Exit the insert mode and then write and quit that. And now if we try to run it again, we'll see hello universe because it's used that variable and if we wanted to do some loops we can create a, a bash loop so let's open up the script again oh try copying it directly into the terminal it's asking us to do let's do that first paste this in here and you'll see it's looped through the, the five numbers So it's looping through, and in each loop, it's executing whatever's in between the do and the done. Indenting the echo line by a couple of spaces here doesn't matter in terms of how the code runs. It's just done for readability. So unlike Python, the indentation is not important there. They use the do and the done to determine code blocks. So in some languages, you have curly braces will determine code blocks. In others, it'll be indentation. And then in this example, it's the do and done uh, keywords. So we want to use the loop syntax to modify the script.sh so that its output when run now looks like this. Okay, so let's open up script sh. Let's create a bit of room. We'll oh I can't paste using the keyboard, I keep forgetting. Okay, so we can paste that in. Something we can do inside of Vim is we could do is it asking us to use a variable still? Hello universe one, two it is okay so what we can do here is we can do I'm gonna do DD to delete that and that basically cuts it so that we can then go and paste that in so we could do that here as well and now what I'll do is D2 enter and I'll cut both of those lines I'll go back into I to insert mode just create a bit of indentation here go back out of insert mode or no actually you can stay you can stay in insert mode for that you can stay in insert mode and do, and do a right click paste or you can go out of insert mode and type p and then it will actually paste that although it's got rid of the indentations but it's not actually an issue and really this my var should be defined up above there's no point in defining it each time let's let's go and do that it's not really important but just for the sake of sound programming let's do it Oh, I've still just I've still kept it inside the loop. Okay, uh, I can't be bothered. That'll do. Let's write and quit. Let's run the script. We've got an error because I've done something wrong. Hello universe one. Okay, let's go back and see what I've done. We need to echo hello my var. Oops. and okay I'll just take this I'll just change this to universe I'll write that and then we'll run it again we'll see this it doesn't like this line because it's inside it's outside of the do uh, statement okay let's 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 take that out we don't need it at all but we'll just paste it up here anyway and then we'll do write and quit we'll run that and we get the five hello universe and on to the final section some more loops and this is just telling us how that instead of going from one to five we can actually specify one two three four in this case the individual values don't have to be a range of numbers they don't even have to be numbers at all use the syntax to modify the for loop to generate the following hello world universe 
and mom. Okay. So what it's suggesting there we could do is let's open this up and instead of let me take out this line and this one and instead of saying one to five here we could say one two three four etc or we could even specify they don't have to be numbers at all so we could say world universe mom presumably in a strings I'm not 100% sure I'm not really a bash scripter let's find out hello universe and then we'll pass in the I let's write that out let's run the script and there we go and that's been the final section hit finish you get the credit for completing this lab and we've now completed the basic terminal usage so hope you've enjoyed this video in the next one we'll be going through the Python AppSec by Duo Security and if you have any questions or comments you can leave them down below thanks